Humanities Wealth Technologies. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks everybody for being here. What a great honor with this full house. Um, my name is Helen Yang. I am the founder and CEO of Ennis Wells Technologies. We have been around for about a year and a half, and we specialize in um, building tools for financial advisors around risk and behavior. Uh, like all the other early stage startups, uh, survival is our number one consideration. And it turns out for financial advisors, they have the same thing in mind. Um, so when I say financial advisors are facing an existential crisis, I am exaggerating a little bit, but only a little bit. You know, we have seen again and again how some of the professions uh, go away. For example, the stockbrokers and travel agents. We saw how they got wiped out by uh, technology. And then uh, the, uh, would, uh, could financial advisors be the next? And then um, a number of years ago when the robo-advisors came along, people were saying, oh, the wolf is coming. And then it turned out it was just a puppy. And then, uh, but the real wolf actually came shortly after that when all the big players, they started to adopt the same robo uh, mentality. And then all the big players, say Fidelity, Charles Schwab, and TD Ameritrade, now they all have these robo capabilities using an algorithm to deliver a uh, commoditized investment management service. This puts a lot of pressure on financial advisors to justify their value, justify their fees, and to stay relevant. Fortunately, there are still a few things that we humans do better than machines. For example, to build long-term relationships. I'm not talking about, say, taking your clients to dinner or to uh, baseball games. I mean, that is obviously, that's great, but I cannot help uh, there because I don't have sports tickets to give out. Um, as somebody in the uh, financial services, the financial in FinTech for over 20 years, what I can do is I can provide something to help financial advisors to deliver a superb client experience by having in-depth, meaningful conversations with their clients. So this is where we come in. And then our unique tools come with, um, come with beautiful visuals and powered by uh, and robust data sets. And then uh, there are two cornerstones to our, uh, to our solutions. One of them is AccuRisk for risk management, and the other one is AccuProfile for investor profiling uh, using a behavioral finance. So let's take a look. So this is, you know, uh, I'm simulating a workflow where the financial advisor is sitting with their clients. Say, so suppose I have a, a hundred clients and they would all be listed here. And then I, if I'm sitting down with Annie Johnson, this is where, you know, I'm gonna start this conversation. And then uh, the first thing we do is a risk tolerance test. You can see we use the real uh, model portfolios, the real upsides and downsides to simulate the workflow where um, Annie Johnson would be picking on one that she feels most comfortable with. It maps directly to a uh, uh, model portfolio. So, you know, the next step we do is risk uh, expectation reality check. And a lot of times people say, well, I really like safety, but on the other hand, I also want 10% on top of inflation. How are you gonna tell people that the expectation is realistic or not? So here we basically chart all the key market segments and their long-term, um, for example, this one is for the US stock, five-year uh, risk and volatility. And then we will chart your, your client's actual risk expectation. In this particular case, this client has realistic, realistic expectations, but say if they are hovering over here and you can tell them that your expectation is not quite realistic. Um, the other thing we have been doing, this is um, filling an important gap, is that the, a lot of times people are telling you, you know, uh, higher risk, higher return, which is true in some context. But if you look at the uh, market, the, the actual the market performances, this is what I'm telling you, the, the, the solid lines here, this is uh, the, uh, the long-term averages. You can see if you go from left to right, 
this is, you know, you go from uh, very conservative to very aggressive, and you are, and then, uh, you know, but on the other hand, we have these dotted lines that shows you how the portfolios actually perform. And then you can see that they are, sometimes can behave pretty badly. And then uh, if we look at the, um, so over here, and we have this, the behavioral piece that we um, categorize investors based on how they react to uh, different market conditions and group them into different investor types. 50% of them are passive, passive investors. And then we also check their, uh, you know, the, um, we also check their behavioral biases. And then this cognitive ability here is very useful when you manage el el elderly customers, aging customers. Um, so I'm gonna stop right over here. And you can see all these tools, how you can deliver a good conversation and then set up the context uh, to develop a uh, deep relationship. So uh, that's what we do. Great, questions. Uh, so now questions. Uh, yes. So, so financial advisors, are they expected to use this when they are talking to their clients or is it something like they are going to do it on their own and maybe print it out and show it to the clients? How, how is this going to be used by them? So uh, we do envision this to be used by financial advisors when they are ha having client meetings. They use this set of tools to have more in-depth conversations. And then when the clients go home, they will be able to log in and get onto the same uh, things and they can review themselves. So it's a platform that can be shared by both clients and the, uh, uh, the uh, advisors. In, in, yeah, over there. You know, if your, your services um, asset class of costing mean that you can have the stock, bonds, and bags, any kind of asset class? Uh, yes, yes. Because we are calculating risk, uh, which in this case we calculate volatility based on daily uh, returns. So we do work with any assets that are liquid. You know, for illiquid assets, for example, private equity, they don't have any pricing, um, you know, so that doesn't work. But anything else, it works. So uh, does this risk analysis feed into the creation of the models that are actually used to uh, provide options for the clients for investing? Uh, yes. So our risk tolerance test supplements the risk tolerance test that the uh, advisors are currently using based on, say, your age, your income level. And this is just at another data point because a lot of times uh, advisors are telling us that their risk tolerance test is not accurate. So you need to look at from several angles. So this is where we come in to provide another, uh, you know, angle to look at this. Mm -hmm. yes. Two questions. So the first one, you're telling us to uh, financial advisors. Are you saying, for example, you're going to go after, say, Charles Schwab advisors, and as a group, or are you going after individual advisors that are private? That's the first question. Second question is. What is the true value added of this in terms of something beyond that you could just create through, say, an Excel spreadsheet of your different investments? Mm, so both are great questions. So eventually, we do want to partner with platforms like Charles Schwab, uh, 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 eMoney, and those kind of platforms. But at the same time, we are also looking for uh, independent financial advisors to, uh, to beta test it. And then they can become clients as well. And then to your second question, we are actually calculating quite sophisticated uh, analytics here. And then, you know, a lot of the times you see out there, there are like return numbers. And then we also calculate real-time risk numbers. And those are, you know, this is not something you can easily calculate in the Excel spreadsheet. So do I have time for one more question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify with real time. Um, how quickly does, does the database behind this pull? So that, because for example, I'm a, a financial investor and I show this to a client and then the next day it's different than they're seeing because it's you know, a double ended marketplace or something, so to speak, to, to look at it. So, how quickly is the update on it? Or is yes. that something that can be chosen by, you know, depending on your client as well? Right, that's a good question. So, we update every night. Okay. So, in terms of risk numbers, we it's a nightly update. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.